Welcome back to A People's Guide to Publishing. I'm Joe Beal, the founder and CEO of Microcosm Publishing and Distribution. I'm also the author of A People's Guide to Publishing, which distills what I've learned from selling millions of books over the past 25 years. I'm Ellie Blue. I'm the Editorial and Marketing Director here at Microcosm. We are an independent midlist publisher based in Portland, Oregon. We have 14 employees, over 650 titles in print with 20 to 40 new books per year, and we distribute thousands of titles from other publishers. We started this podcast so that we can share what we've learned with newer publishers so that you can learn from our mistakes. Or maybe you just want to understand the publishing industry. Today, we are going to talk to you about and show you on the video version of the pod some new zines woo new zine day who likes new zines i like, like new zines i don't know i like old zines mm -hmm. i feel that public opinion is more on your side i know i was gonna say i've like won this argument before we've <laughs> begun before there was an argument we do get a lot of emails where people are like do you still have the zine from the 90s i know and like we have just the treasure trove that just sits untouched by time we also get a number of emails that are like, don't send me any zines from the 90s. <laughs> and then my personal favorite, my friend made this zine in the 90s, and then someone else will respond, no, I made it last year. <laughs> zines, always a contentious issue. Mm -hmm. And as we get older, we just really lose track of time. Archivist's bane, the reader's delight. That should be their tagline. <laughs> Well, let's talk about some zines that were made just in the last couple months. Oh, what a clever idea. What, where, where do you want to start? Let's start at the top with Corking. Oh, corking see. was delivered to us anonymously by people from the, as I believe, I shouldn't misrepresent this, the Black Lives Matter bike block of Portland, mind you. Mm-hmm. And this is what they learned from many years of, you know, justice, scuffles, protecting people from getting run over by cars, you know, usual stuff that people, situations people end up in through the course of pursuing the kind of world they want to live in. I love that this scene is purely tactical, like it doesn't tell you why you should protest or even assume what you're protesting. People protest for all kinds of reasons and all kinds of things. It's just like, here's how to use your bicycle tactically in a protest, and also, you know, a little bit of self-care and de-escalation and fuck the police. I appreciate their, that they do not rule out the tandem. No, or the clip art. Mm -hmm. I feel like any zine worth its salt has at least a passing familiarity with clip art. Mm -hmm. And yet, it's also all about love. Oh. Where they made this little heart out of a chain. And yet, it looks nothing like our logo. Mm -hmm. I really like the um, the map, the tactical map of mm, how to how deploy to your bikes at intersections in order to protect the protesters. Mm -hmm. There were many... Um, Ironically enough, in the city files, there were many diagrams that looked just like this uh -huh. when I was uh, making the film after mass. The police had confiscated their own, well, they had made their own diagrams, and then they had confiscated protester diagrams. I'm and then they had made diagrams on how to counteract the diagrams, and then the protesters made their diagrams on how to counteract the counteracting of the diagrams. My favorite thing about that zine is that quirking is a technique that was invented by critical mass, mm -hmm. and it doesn't even mention critical mass. Right. It's just taken on a life of its own. Ellie, that was literally 30 years ago. Why, why would we talk about that? Right. That's the past. We're living in the now. All right, what do we have next? Ooh, this one is by a author that may be familiar to you. Oh, Bo Gilles? <laughs> I am well, familiar with this. It uh... says, is that how it's pronounced? It says Joe Beale, but... I... <laughs> oh, I thought it was French. <laughs> this is the Autism FAQ, written by our very own Joe. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about your zine? This it's... is now an author interview. <sighs> Should have seen this coming. The um, So when I published good trouble in 2016 i kind of thought i would get many people merely having revelations about my own life which i did but i also received many 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 people coming to me and being like excellent now that we've gotten that out of the way i have 50 questions and so this is the zine that purports to answer well 60 some of those questions that's a lot. And um, they are literally frequently asked questions. So it's like a lot of stuff from parents. It's a lot of stuff from other people. 
it's a lot of and you know a lot of the more brass tacks basic things about like what is autism what does it mean how does it manifest how do you manage it how you know like why is this myth so popularized about it things like that but i like that this is for everybody like there's stuff like the questions are from people who are autistic and people who aren't and people who are like i don't like those autistic people many of the mm. questions i will tell you are um very assuredly neurophobic but you know i mean it's kind of like when you're any kind of person in any kind of society, it's the dominant voices that create the agenda. So, you know, I mean, autistic people are just as prone to being neurophobic as, you know, trans people are prone to being transphobic. You know, it's just like you mirror the world that has pounded its values into you, and then you have to unlearn them. And you can unlearn them, and that's sort of the point here. I like that it begins with, what is autism? A very good question. And then it ends with... What isn't autism? What is the best thing that being autistic has taught you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody sequenced that thoroughly. <laughs> this scene, I feel like um, it's $7, which may seem like a lot with the zine, but the scene has more content and real content than most much longer books. I will tell you that while I wrote most of that years ago, it took me three weeks of little else to edit it into a semblance of being... Not regrettable. I'm excited to read it. I wanted something that I would be proud of. You know, I didn't want to just make something for the sake of making something. And um, that is going to be, that can be part of the basis for a book. Let us hope. What's next? Oh, Imprisoned with COVID. Originally titled Imprisoned in Prison. <laughs> so for some reason that we can't remember at this time, we retitled it at the last minute. I feel like imprisoned in prison is way more fun to say, but imprisoned with COVID-19 does tell you more about what the zine is about. Yeah. And, you know, so... Less redundancy. Which, this is a great window into our narrow world where um, oftentimes you will use the author's proposed working title until literally the 11th hour, sometimes literally in the design stage, or as it goes to print, you're like, wait a minute, that can't be the title, can it? And then, so, you know, descriptive. So this is part of our Prison to Pamphlet program? Mm hmm Did you come up with that name? or did P to P, P. All me. All you. Marketing whiz here. I I'm, designed the logo for it, too. Yeah, it has a nice little logo. We get um, prisoners write to us all the time. And I, are they, like, submitting zines, or are they just kind of telling us their life story and it becomes one? Or It kind of works every which way. So uh, most prisoners write to us to say, hey, I heard about this book. It sounds really cool. I think it could really help me. Can I get a copy of it? Here is 17 days wages to pay for the copy of this book. And by the way, if you're listening to this podcast, you can go to our website and Google prisoners and you can fund books going to prisoners. So we created that program so you can help fund sending books to prison. And it's like a, we match you 50, 50. So like if you give $10, we give $10. And then that's how we send books to people in prison. So they don't have to send us 17 days wages to buy a book. And then um, we would get a lot of people pitching us from that. And then, so we made a little handout that goes with that, that explains how to do it and then how to write and how to submit. And, you know, it's very slow because they have to literally mail you handwritten pages that have to be typed and et cetera. So, you know, and this is one of those um, in the series, and it is literally about what it was like to be in prison while, let's just say, certain government bodies were not following COVID protocol for basic safety. Ooh. Yikes. Yikes. Indeed. If you've ever been happy to not live a certain situation. I know, right? Well, mm -hmm. thank you, Tim Spock, for sharing your story with us. Also, I'm sorry. Finally. Do you want to introduce this song? Oh, man, I get all the all the speaking pits. Um, so lastly, we and this is I feel like we saved the well, they're all the best, but we saved the one that is maybe most notable current events for last. So this is White Riot Black Massacre by Chris Rose, which details the nineteen nine or I'm sorry nineteen twenty one uh, race massacre in Tulsa, where you know, the basic story is a black man was accused of flirting with a white woman and or various uh, exaggerations 
exist of the story. There hasn't been any supporting evidence that those things happened, but the result is that the portion of Tulsa, which was then called Black Wall Street, which was a very affluent community, was just like completely leveled to the ground. And, you know, with government support, with police support, with, you know, some argue military support. And, you know, I mean, it's just like a completely horrific thing to the point of being unbelievable, you know. And um, we just had the 100th anniversary uh, this past month. And so we can tell you with some excitement that this was, I think at its high mark, it was the number seven selling title in all of Oklahoma, you know, during a given week. And then I think we fell to... That's a zine. This zine was a bestseller. It <laughs> no, went head to head with books. So I'm just going to tell you that zine outsold Stephen King and <laughs> sold like basically any household name you can think of in Oklahoma that week, you know, which is pretty wild. Um, and it sat there, I think, the entire month of May, you but, know, if not into, and into June, you know. So this was pitched to us as a book, and if we had done it as a book, we wouldn't have been able to get it out in time for the no. anniversary. So that's kind of the power of the zine, is we were able to just, like, turn and, it around. You know, and it's not, like, something that's only useful on the 100th anniversary, or only in May, or, you know, I mean, it's something that is very poignant even as people want to move back to having fun and all that kind of stuff, it's like of relevant today as it was then, unfortunately. You know, it's like the amount of yeah. stuff stuck in 1921 is a little painfully vast. And this is not like a topic that is taught in widely in school yeah. outside of Tulsa, even though it's a hugely important and horrible event in our country's history. So yeah. being able to get the story to more people is... It feels good to be able to do that. Vital. We did the Cincinnati um, race protests book uh, some years ago, Six Days in Cincinnati. And then, you know, and it's kind of the same way. It does very well. Um, you know, it's been popular, well received. And, you know, and these are kind of things people just don't know about, but they're more well meaning. So it's more the shock of it. But, you know, part of our job is educating people about what has gone on so you can do better, you know? Oh, man. Not that it's a high bar. We have another new zine by Chris, which I didn't find out there, the final oh, girl. Might not be here yet. I think it is, though. Oh, maybe you'll have to look on the shelf. All but right. maybe we'll do it next time. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> thanks for joining us once again. Please send your questions to podcast at microcosmpublishing.com so we can answer them on future episodes. And please give us five stars on iTunes and everywhere else that podcasts are reviewed. You can find us on the internet at microcosm.pub. On Twitter at microcosm. On Facebook at microcosm publishing. On Instagram at microcosm underscore pub. And here in Portland, Oregon on North Williams Avenue. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>